The army has seized power in a coup in Gabon. Senior officers intervened minutes after President Ali Bongo was declared the winner of disputed elections. The leader, whose family has been in power for more than half a century, is now under house arrest. The military have closed the borders of the Central African nation and dissolved all state institutions. World leaders have condemned the coup. The U.S. says it's deeply concerned about the unrest in the oil-producing country. Jubilant scenes on the streets of the Gabonese capital. After nearly 56 years of Bongo family rule, the political dynasty was overthrown by its own presidential Republican guard. After so much time, many there are excited at the prospect of change. This is Independence Day. The army has freed our country. We are free. We have the right to be free and to express ourselves the way we want. We've had enough of the PDG party. They've ruled us for decades, even if they never won any elections. While many of Libreville's residents are celebrating, the sentiment is not shared by everyone. The US and Russia expressed concern, while the EU said it may impose sanctions. The African Union and the UN condemned the coup, and Nigeria's president expressed alarm over what he called contagious autocracy. If successful, this will be the sixth African country where the military has seized power since 2020. The ousted president, now under house arrest, called for his supporters to take action. I'm Ali Bongo Onjimba, president of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise, for the people here have arrested me. He had claimed victory in last weekend's elections, but just minutes after the announcement was made, senior military officers released this statement. In the name of the Gabonese people, we have decided to defend peace by putting an end to the current regime. The general elections of August 26, 2023, as well as the truncated results, are cancelled. The borders are closed until further notice. All institutions of the Republic are dissolved. In Gabon, many now hope for a brighter future. But the international community can only watch on with bated breath. I asked UW correspondent Flori Shobani how Gabon got to this point. Well, uh, many analysts will tell you that this is not a surprise at all for a country like Gabon. Now, it may seem to be following the trend of coups in Africa that we've seen in recent times, but this particular case is different. Now, the president that was ousted, um, Ali Bongo Odimba, has been in office for 14 years, doing two years, uh, two terms, doing two terms, and he was just recently announced for his third tenure. His father ran the country for 42 years. He took over from his father, who ran the country for 42 years. Now, Gabon has been independent since 1960, but has only had three presidents. So it has essentially been in the hands of this one family. So there has been a growing discomfort and dissatisfaction among the people, you know, for in terms of the leadership of their country. Also because Gabon is a, is a very wealthy country, but the wealth that, you know, the country has in terms of natural resources doesn't seem to translate to the lives of ordinary Gabon people. So, uh, and meanwhile, the president and his family live very lavish lives. Now, uh, just this past Saturday, there was an election where... Um, a few hours, the few hours before the coup, President Ali Odimba was announced as the winner, and it was almost as if the military officers were waiting for him to be announced before then coming in, because they believe that the results that were announced do not represent the desires of the people of Gabon. So essentially, this coup is simply people or the military 
using the fact that people are not satisfied with the rulership of this one family to step in and say, okay, people don't want you anymore. It's time for us to change things. This is the latest in a number of coups in West and Central Africa since 2020, and our viewers will surely remember what happened in Niger just last month. You say it's different in Gabon, but is there some sort of a common thread here? Well, the common thread, I would say, would be the fact that Africans are tired of bad leadership. Um, in the case of Niger, in the case of Mali, Burkina Faso, those countries, uh, the the reason why we saw coups in those country countries, the major reason why we saw coups in those countries was insecurity and Islamic terrorist groups. But that's not the case in in Gabon. And you know, again, yes, it was insecurity, but the fact that the leaders, the democratically elected leaders in the, in those countries, the people felt that those leaders could not handle the security situation. And so they, they, there was growing frustration on that side. But on, in the case of Gabon, it's also frustration with leadership, but more so with this particular family and, you know, the way the country has been ruled over the past 63 years. SDW's Flor Shabani in Lagos, thank you for your input. Now let's bring in uh, Kwesi Anning. He's the director of the Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center in Ghana. Sir, can you tell us a bit more about who's behind this coup? Well, at least we do know um, that the perpetrators are from the Presidential Guard. And similar to the Niger case, it looks as if Presidential Guards are close to the president and the centers of power. So they know the levels of corruption, they're planning to steal elections, uh, the abuse of human rights and undermining of the rule of law, so they can move and move very swiftly. But this particular Bongo's family have governed this country for close to six decades. And I think the military, under their vision and mission, felt they had to step in because he had, he had changed the constitution to run for a third term, and they thought that could bring the country into crisis. So if you listen to to the name that they have chosen, the Committee of Transition and the Restoration of Institutions, I think it sends a signal as to why they made this coup and what they intend to do. Is that also uh, why there seems to be quite a bit of support uh, for uh, the military there in this coup, that the population wants to get rid of this dynasty of, of presidents? Well, I think yeah, the point is that they are so desperate to get rid of the dynasty and that we shouldn't misconstrue the support as support for the military. It is just pure joy that this monster called Bongo and his family are now out of power. Mm. Within six months, if the military doesn't hand over, we will see a more brutal crackdown on civil liberties by the same military against the people who are supporting mm. them today. Now, is there a trend uh, uh, in Africa? There's one coup after another. It begins to feel coordinated in some way. Well, I think, Gerhard, it's also partly um, a response of the failure of our, of our multilateral institutions that should play the role of cracking the whip and applying the normative frameworks against unconstitutional changes of government. So we have an African peer review mechanism in which heads of states ought to have controlled and, and critiqued each other. That does not work. We have the African Union frameworks. And I mean, although Mr. Bongo has been flouting the rules consistently, and even at the status of his health, the union has been very quiet. And when the coup took place, the union only issued a statement about 30 minutes ago. The union is in crisis mm. because it has failed to apply its own rules. And these coups seem to be spread. I can assure you that by the end of the year, you and I will be having another conversation about another coup that has taken place. And I'm looking forward to that one. Kwesi Anning, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much.